Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Blender 2.92, the beta, has just been officially released and today we're going to take a look at certain things which you should be expecting with the final release of Blender 2.92. Although with the present release which we have right now, there are certain features that are missing and I will go through and talk to you guys about it. Meanwhile, you will still be able to see these features within the release note. So hopefully these features are definitely going to be coming over to Blender 2.92 as the bug fixes and other things progresses. So if you want to get it, I'm going to put a link in the description to where you will be able to get this. And with that said, let's dive directly into Blender 2.92. So with Blender 2.92 open right here, you can notice that it says the beta. If we click on this button and go over to the splash screen, you'll see that we have a brand new and a clean splash screen. Now this splash screen is made available by Joanna Kobireska and you can also see that, you know, that looks good. Meanwhile, by clicking on this button and going over to the about page, you see that the Blender logo looks different, the about looks even way detailed and you can see a couple more description about Blender. Contrary to what we have in Blender 2.91, which once you click on this button and go over to about Blender, you kind of see it in this way. So they're going for a much more bolder and nicer looking stuff and that just simply makes sense. Now there is a tool set which is supposed to be existing within the interface of Blender 2.92. This is within the release note but if you simply get Blender 2.92 right now, you would not be able to see it. So hopefully this one is going to be coming in very soon and that is the primitive art and that deals with the new interaction tool. So the new interaction tool is a pretty cool tool which you can play with and with a couple of clicks you'll be able to add and create geometries directly on your viewport. Now this is going to be very handy in terms of adding quick geometries like triangles, cones, cylinders and so on and so forth. And something else which also makes a lot of sense is there's an orientation feature to this which deals with how you can place things on your viewport. So in case you want to place things based off surfaces or you just want to simply place them directly in your scene based off view, you can easily play with this one as well. So hopefully this is going to make its way to Blender 2.92 in the final version. And with that said, let's also take a look at some other cool features. Now I'm going to pop over to Blender 2.92, the alpha, because this feature doesn't really exist with the 2.92 beta at the point. So if we simply click right here and go over, you would notice that we have the asset browser. So the asset browser has been a very cool tool that a lot of people have talked about. And it's very nice to see that this one exists and you know, it's working fine. Although if I pop back to Blender 2.92, the beta version, this is actually not there yet. So if I go over here, you can not, not see it. So just in case you download the 2.92 beta and you don't see this, that's not a problem as it's still something that is still within its, you know, uh, beta section. So there are tons of tool sets and stuff that is not going to be available at the point. So just in case you don't see it, you can revert over to Blender 2.9 to the alpha and take a look at this. So the asset browser makes a lot of sense and we've talked about the asset browser and how you can work with it. As all you need to do is select the object within your outliner, right click, go all the way to ID data and then you can simply mark this as an asset and once you do that automatically you're going to notice that it's here and the beautiful thing is you can drag this all the way out and drag this all the way out and do some cool stuff with it now at any point in time you want to make changes you can simply make changes to this asset and reload that change right here so a very good example is if I press tab on the keyboard and tap 3 on the keyboard and select that I regularly do this so I'm just going to do that tap E and bring this one down and tap the tab key one more time and once I have that I can right click and click on refresh and automatically that will refresh it and right here we have the exact same thing so the same thing that you can do here is what you could do for your geometries is the same thing that you could do for your shading and you can do the same thing for both your animations and also scenes and speaking about things that you can do right now there is also a pretty cool feature which is something that the folks at blender foundation have been talking about and this is a project the project everything nodes is something that is kicking off with blender 2.92 so we blender 2.92 the beta here if we click on file go all the way to open recent we can open the pebble scattering now this is a pretty cool scattering that has been done by the folks at blender foundation and you can also choose to download this and play with it now i'm also going to link this in the description where you can read more about it and also see how this implementation works so the beautiful thing with this is right now you can simply make changes now the everything nodes has started off earlier and we've already talked about how this one works and how you can get started with it and you can use this for populating stuff now in case you want to populate your scene maybe you want to increase the number of pebbles that you have in your scene so right here i'm just going to increase the density for this increase the density right here 
and also increase the density. Now, if you've predefined the pebbles and also predefined how the things will be scattered across your viewport or across a particular surface, this is now something that makes a lot of sense. So we've covered a lot of videos about this one before. So I'm going to put a link in the description where you can find that. And for those who like to also make some procedural assets, we've already covered a video about how you can make procedural tables with this tool directly in Blender. And just to give you guys a good head start, if you click on fire and get a brand new scene like so, you can easily now work with this. So if you click on this object, you go over right here, you can click on this button and you can easily apply the geometry nodes so this one is good as it's available with the beta version so you can get that and if you go over to the geometry nodes right here you can start doing some very cool stuff so right here is where you can add some stuff and it's also very interesting to know that right now they've also implemented some very cool nodes so one of the cool nodes that they've just recently implemented is if you go over to where you have your points there is now a point rotate alongside with the point scale separate and also translate so at any point in time you would like to maybe make some translation so let's go ahead and transform that and maybe we can do a simple join right there so we've already talked about this one before this is just for those who are seeing this for the first time you can now easily use this and start making a couple of stuff directly in your scene so with this said let's take a look at the grease pencil so for grease pencil we've talked about grease pencil a lot and some of the cool things that is now available there so let's go ahead and throw in a blank and switch over to grease so let's go over to the draw section and by this we're just going to draw across our viewport now once we draw across our viewport select the object press tab on the keyboard you would notice that right now we can easily click on this button and select and also get some handles so i can select this handle and i can move this around so let's go ahead and grab that and i can simply move this one around like so and we can actually select any of these given handles and also make changes to this so something else which we've already talked about before is in most cases when you're working with your grease pencil actually let's get a brand new scene so with a brand new scene here we're going to take a look at flat caps so what these flat caps if i simply draw around this and draw pass through it and i choose to cut some parts if i click on this button and i simply cut you would notice that we are having this rounded looking effect right there but then if i wouldn't want this rounded looking effect so let's go back and select all of what we have here and delete that select this right here and if i would like to get something even way better and probably i don't want to have that stuff all i need to do is select this object go over to flat caps and right now we can cut this one out so you can see that automatically becomes flat and we can also cut this one out and that becomes flat and we can cut this out and that becomes flat as well and while we're looking at some very cool improvements to the grease pencil in the previous version of blender which was blender 2.91 we did see the image tracing tool in grease pencil 2.92 there is now an option where you can image trace sequences so this is even way better and you know it's cleaner so it simply means that you can do your sketches somewhere do your entire sketch animation somewhere and bring those things directly into blender and convert them to grease pencil opening up more possibilities and more options of things that you could do combining both 2d and 3d elements directly into blender has never been any better so these are some very cool improvements that are now available with the grease pencil and of course there are also a couple more and i'm also going to link some of the update videos that we have in the description so that you guys can go ahead and check this one out now with the grease pencil talked about there is also some updates that is now available with the sculpting room so we've already talked about pablo and uh, you know the things that pablo does and if we simply click on that object and go right here and apply that some updates are quite interesting so if we go over to the sculpt mode right now and click and drag this all the way out let's press f on the keyboard to scale this brush right up there you would notice that we are now having some very nice stuff so if we start off with the grab tool so we've already talked about the grab tool and some of the implementation that pablo is doing to this one and if you scroll all the way down you notice that he has added the grab silhouette now this is a feature that is not existing in the previous version so if you look at blender 2.91 that feature doesn't exist so if we have that grab silhouette let's press the f key all the way up and then we can increase our brush size and at this point you can now easily grab silhouettes 
of your object. Something else which he has also added is the face set delete geometry operation. So if we also go over to the face set right here and we click down here, we will be able to delete certain face set geometry. So how does this one work? So this one works in a very interesting form as well. So if I press F on the keyboard to bring that down, I can make some face set right here. I can make some face set right over there. Let's rotate across, make some other one right here and then finally here. So if we select this object at this point, click on this button and go all the way to this part at this point, we can now delete this part, delete this part and delete this one. So we've also seen some updates to the fairing and we've also talked about the fairing previously. And this is also a very cool tool which you can use. So if we click on the fairing at this point, click on fairing position and we can use this to fair that position and also use this one to fair a position like so. So fairing is more like, you know, collapse and making that particular place flat. So this is uh, something which is very useful. And I guess a lot of people might find this one quite interesting to work with. One more feature to take a look at about the sculpting room is if you click on this object, uh, maybe you jump over to the sculpting room. Actually, you don't need to be in the sculpting room to do that. Now Pablo has added a new feature. So if I click right here and go over, you would notice that we have a pretty cool studio light preset. And this works for both those that would like to paint in case you want to paint and that's the preset of light you want to see while you're painting. This is gonna be very beautiful for you to see and work with. And at the same time, when you're sculpting, you might also want to see this, and this is also going to come in quite handy. So for those who like to play with this one, this is a feature that is available, and you can simply go ahead and take a look at this and get started with it. Meanwhile, before we go, let's take a look at some of the things that are supposed to be available with Blender 2.92 that we kind of didn't see within the first release of the beta. So we talked about the modeling tools. This is currently not available there. Hopefully this is going to come with the final release. Meanwhile, while looking at things that were supposed to be coming, there is no talk directly here, even within the release notes about the asset browser. So probably the asset browser may not come over here. So if you go over to the input output slash override, there's nothing about the asset browser right here. And uh, yeah, th there's literally nothing about it. Something else which I kind of felt might be coming over to Blender 2.92 is the Vertis Sculpt Painting, okay? Something that Pablo has been working on before. That is a feature that is literally not anywhere around here. So we couldn't find anything like that yet. And there are some other cool updates that is available which we are definitely going to be having from playing with later on. In terms of motion tracking, sequencing, there is an update for those working with Mac and for the Compositor there is now a couple more updates for you guys so that just in case you want to play with it, you can actually go ahead and take a look at that. For the modeling tools, there is literally little to no modeling happening with this particular update. I guess this update is more like a, a round off update for some of the things that didn't make it over to Blender 2.91 and hopefully we're going to see more features come over to Blender 2.93. So far so good, the physics system seems to be very cool as we did get a very nice fluid simulation tool which is available and just recently there was an implementation to the viscosity and some other cool stuff that are attributed to the fluid simulation so with this set these are some of the very cool stuff Eevee still has a, a couple more features which we've already gone through and talk about like the crypto mat and the AOVs and for cycles cycles at the same time has a better performance capability for both GPU volumes shading baking and also performance and actually Speaking about cycles and uh, stuff that you could do in cycles, one of those times we did take a look at how you could work with something. So if we jump back over here and uh, let's simply take a look at this because I guess a lot of people may not know what you know that simply looks like. If we go over here and go over to the shader and let's just, uh, let's just select this object and assign a brand new material to it. Now with the brand new material here, if you take a look at this, actually one more thing is you would notice that the colors here is changed. So contrary to what we have with uh, Blender 2.91, you can see that the colors here are green. You know, we have this green one, we have green right here, green right here. Yep. But in 2.92, you would notice that these are red. All right, so what I would like to show you guys is the bevel. So probably you don't know about this, but in previous versions of Blender, 
when you bring in a bevel node and you connect this to the normal and you choose to render with your gpu this is actually something that wasn't you know that's some, this is something that you couldn't really do so let's actually make some room right here and let me raise this one all the way up to one and switch over and change this from EV to cycle so that we can take a look at this. And you can actually see that we have this beveling thing going on right there. So for this, I can choose to increase how much samples I want and I can also bring this one down to 0 0.01 so that you guys can see or I can increase this all the way to 0.08. So actually, let's make this 0.08. Yeah, that was good. So you can see the bevel happening. I mean, if you take a look at it, you would notice that there's a very tiny bevel happening there. Now, previously, this was not supported for GPU. If we switch over to the GPU now, you can now see that we, you know, we have this. Previously, this was something that was not available. So we can go all the way that way and we can also move this all the way up. Now, if you push this a bit too much, you would probably break the normal so i'm just going to set this to 0 0.8 at, at this point so that i can see that and of course if i press tab on the keyboard tab 3 and do the same thing which we did earlier which is tab i and also tab e in words you can also see that we have the bevels across the edges so this is more like a, this is a render sort of beveling thing that you can get and it's only applicable to Blender 2.92 using the GPU. So in previous versions of Blender, why you use the GPU? But this and also the AO was something that wasn't available. So cool updates right here. And for those who like to read more about these things, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can take a look at it. If you want to read about, you know, the everything nodes, you want to read about the whole nodal documentation, this is definitely going to be in the description so that you can take a look at it and for those who want to also see the previous videos that we've covered in terms of updates and for those who want to play with the procedural table i'm also going to put a link in the description and for those looking for add-ons and you know those who like to join the discord all of the links are definitely going to be in the description so that you can do well to check them out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace